Hey everybody, coming at you from out in the wilderness. Well, close to the wilderness. Now, <clears throat> you always see on YouTube these survival kits, okay? Now, if you have a huge survival kit, that's called a backpack, and you're not a survivalist, you're a hiker. <laughs> now, a lot of people have these little survival kits because if a kit is too big, you're not going to carry it. A lot of people, they have these little kits here. They have like a little Altoids tin. And then they'll be like, this, this emergency blanket is my shelter. <laughs> well, to me, that's ridiculous. This is not a survival kit. This is a supplemental kit to a, a, another kit. Now, in my own opinion, kits, there's a certain amount, there's a certain size that they can be. Now, if they're too big, you're not willing to carry them on every hiking trip. But... <clears throat> they have to be big enough that they have to be a supplemental size. To me, this is just about as minimalist of a kit as you can get during the winter time. Now, I've also got something else in my pocket of my jacket I'll show you later that is supplemental to this kit. And normally what I do with this, let me take my jacket off here and I'm going to show you because I'm going to explain something here for a minute. <clears throat> I got the hood of my truck. <laughs> what you want to do is get some sort of a belt of some kind like this, like a quick belt. I mean a uh, yeah, quick change belt. And this has got molly on it. So what you want to do, that molly web, and you can either, un either, either unsnap it or just run it through. Just like that. And then I put it on the small of my back. Okay, let's take a look at this. I put it right there on the small of my back. Okay. This weighs one pound, 12 ounces. And I can walk with it, and it's like it ain't even there. Now, normally what I do is I'll carry this minimalist survival kit because it's so small, I don't mind it being there. And I also would carry two-quart canteen of water. But the problem with this is with no filter, uh, no pot, no cup, no way of boiling fresh water, once your two quarts of water's gone, it's gone. That's the end of that. Now, this is four pounds. And so my kit <clears throat> has evolved to where... And that thing wouldn't fit on the belt. That thing you carry on your shoulder. Now, let me show you something else. It has evolved to a Molly canteen pouch. This, this does a lot more. This is a canteen with a cup with uh, Altoids tins on each side with a little bit of more stuff packed in there and so what we do with this is the same thing as we did here let's see if I can do this standing up now this is this is three pounds so what's hanging off my belt is four pounds oh, I dropped it. <clears throat> so what's going to be hanging off my belt here is four pounds 12 ounces you can either snap the molly snaps on this is a brand new pouch though, so I don't, I just assume feed it through. So there you go, that, <clears throat> there's your kit. Let's see if I can strap this on. All right. Now I've got that right there. And I don't really notice that it's there. It's, it's, it really doesn't weigh that much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my jacket on now. And then we're going to walk out in the woods and we're going to get lost. And then we're going to set up a shelter with what's in here. Now, I may not show. It's going to be dark here in about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Uh, <clears throat> now, this looks stupid because it's, it's lifted my jacket up real bad. And this is the jacket that has the big pocket in the back. But since it's wintertime, what I've done is I put a blanket, a very, very, very small blanket in that pocket. As a supplement because like right now it's 51 degrees and the temperature's dropping and it's supposed to get down to about 38 now I don't know if this kit's gonna work or not that low I don't know how comfortable I'll be but there's ways of making it comfortable okay so let's go find a shelter location and dig out some of the components of this kit and get started all right so I'm a hiker and I'm walking along I'm walking through the woods la -dee -da, and I'm enjoying myself and the next thing you know I'm looking around And everything looks the same, and I don't know where I'm at, and I don't know where the trail is. Immediately, 
I know it's going to be dark soon, so it's time to start looking for a shelter spot. Now, you can wander through the woods looking and looking and looking and being like, oh, this is a great spot. Well, basically, if you can find some sort of a fallen tree to work off of, you're good to go. Now, right here, we're near the clean water source. As far as drinking water, we're going to drink what's in the canteen. When it runs out, we can put some tablets in it, or we can get a fire going, and this water here is crystal clear. So when we go to boil water, that's what we're going to use. So now let's go this way, and I've decided I am lost. It's getting dark, and I don't want to wander through the woods in the darkness. So what I'm going to do is I found right here near the water, you don't want to be too close to the water because some creeks will, if it rains like crazy, it'll overflow. But this is perfect right here. See this right here? See where those uh, trees are? That's absolutely perfect. That's the beginning of a natural shelter. And then there's all kinds. Not only is that there, not only do you have the beginnings of a shelter there, but there's all kinds of wood everywhere that you can use to build it out of. Because I don't have a machete or saw. All I've got is a Mora knife attached to my kit. So let's clear this spot out and dig out the components of the shelter. All right. All right. In my pockets of this jacket, I have gloves. That'll be the first thing that I'm going to need. Because I know I'm going to have to clear a spot and I know... I'm also going to have to uh, gather some leaves up. More on that in a minute. Now let's take this jacket off because I don't want to sweat in the jacket. Because when I get to moving around, building a shelter, moving logs and stuff, I'll start sweating. So far I had a very pleasant, easy walk in to the woods, so I didn't sweat. Now in the back back here, I have... Let me pull it out. This is like a beach blanket. It's called a groundhog. It's an abo gear brown, abo gear groundhog blanket. It's not much of a blanket, but it fits in this pouch in the back of the jacket. And if things get ugly, I'll use it. Now, is that cheating? No, it's not cheating. It's because I was prepared, just like you're prepared with a survival kit. But sometimes if you set up a shelter good enough, you don't need that. So let's take the jacket off. Find a place behind it. We're going to hang it right there on that vine right there now <clears throat> we're going to take this kit off and look at it because i'm going to show you the components of what should be in the shelter all right here's the kit so let's lock this down I'm using a real lightweight tripod that I'm not used to. So the components of this is a clear garbage bag and a clear garbage bag. Everybody's always like, oh, I've got a garbage bag. But they don't ever explain why. And then in this kit, I have two survival blankets because one is never enough. And then down in the bottom, have. Like I say, this may just be enough. A little Mylar bivy, a little bivy sack. A lot of people will put one of these to their Altoids kit tin and say, oh, my survival shelter. Well, to me, and this ain't a great shelter, but this is, this is minimalist. This is a minimalist shelter. Two of these emergency blankets, and then two of these bags, and then a bivy sack. Okay, so that's what we're going to need out of that. So we're going to zip this thing back up. And then we're going to take this. And we're going to clip it somewhere to where we can find it. On the top part of the shelter, I laid my jacket. Now what part of the survival kit I don't need, I'm going to clip right here. So I don't lose it. Now, Let's take our shelter components, the ones we don't need, set them on the jacket, 
the bags are going to fill up with leaves, so I'm going to put that in my pocket. Now, let's put our gloves on. I got my jacket off, and I may take my hat off because I don't want to sway it. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is I'm not even going to waste time with a knife yet. I'm only going to get the knife out for if I need the knife. I'm going to pick some of these sticks up around here. Some of these vines, sticks. And that's it. <clears throat> that's all I'm going to worry about. I'm not going to dig down to the ground. I'm just going to leave the leaves there because I'm not laying on the ground because when you lay on the ground, it sucks the, the heat out of your body. We're going to be laying on the trash bags full of leaves. Now, the first thing that we want to do after that clearing part is we want to go and pick up a bunch of sticks that we're going to lay on one side. literally just sticks and branches laying around everywhere and they can be half dead because all you're doing is supporting a mylar blanket and some leaves I've got a good framework built up. It's time to pull one of these survival blankets out, and we're going to see how big it is. <clears throat> this is one of those like they get them, sell them in like a three pack or a four pack on Amazon. And these ones with the color on the outside of them are a lot thicker than the regular mylar. Now the thing about mylar is there's no insulative values whatsoever. All right, it's waterproof. And it's reflective and that's it there is no there is no insulative values so this is actually a thin sheet of material it's not a blanket so let's see how big this is one might do it let's lay it on and see what happens See, one is plenty big enough. It's the full length. Even if my feet stick out a little bit, it doesn't matter because I got waterproof boots. So the next step is what you want to do now is you want to pull out a couple of sticks, like you want to gently pull out a couple of them and put them on the top, just like that. I want to make sure that I can crawl in there and go back up in there enough to where when I look up, when I look straight up, I'll have the cover over my head in case it rains. Yeah, I can get plenty up under there. But before I get under there, I'm going to get the bags and fill them with leaves because I didn't want to really lay flat on the ground. This is the part that's going to take a while is filling your bags with leaves. You want to kind of find an open, open area where you don't have to deal with a bunch of vines and stuff. 
And you don't want to go too deep to get the moist leaves. You want to get all the dry stuff off the top. Now we're looking at the back side and as you can see I got a mountain of leaves on there. Ain't no way the wind's gonna get through that. You can barely see a little bit of orange. I've even got them piled up around the tree. So I'll be nice and protected from the wind. Now you can do a debris shelter with just mountains of leaves, but that takes like 10 times the amount of leaves and you've got them falling on you all night. It's better to have that reflective waterproof cover under there. Now the final two bags will be the bed. I started working up a sweat on those last two, so I had to take my hat off to keep from sweating. I didn't feel like I was sweating too bad here anyway, but then again, you're probably going to sweat anyway being in a mylar bag. <laughs> so these things right here, you got one end open. The one end closed, you want the closed end at the head and the closed end at, the, at your feet because as the leaves fall out, they can fall away as you're moving around at night. But if you have the open ends towards each other, they're going to fall together and block each other. Now this part takes more work because you want to make sure that there's no sticks in there. You need some really heavy duty bags because these got a couple of rips on them as I was walking through the woods carrying them back. See how it feels. My knee is hanging outside the shelter. But if I have to, I could put that other Mylar blanket over on this side. But I'm going to be in a Mylar bivy sack, so I don't think it's necessary. I, if I knew for a fact it was going to rain, I would get that other Mylar blanket and lay it over here with some sticks. But I think this will be okay like this. So now this is a tack bivy. Let's see how big it is. Now that's a lot thicker than the other one.
bag is huge. I see, from examining it, <clears throat> my feet are going to be hanging out the shelter over here, but I don't really think it's that big of a deal. I think it's, all, it's getting dark pretty soon. Oh, yeah. It's getting dark pretty soon. I checked the time. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you the contents of the survival kit because I guarantee you in the morning I ain't going to feel like it. <laughs> and, uh, Oh, I'll show you that blanket in the back of my jacket, too. So I was extremely nervous about getting this thing set up, the shelter before, because I know right now what I can do is I can take my headlamp and put it on, and I can, I can find my way in here and lay down. All right, now let's look in this survival kit real quick. Now what I've added, <clears throat> now I didn't even use this other blanket. I know for a fact, since this is just a, you know, since this is just a, a mock run to see how cold I'll get, um, if I knew it was going to rain or snow, I think I would put on my headlamp and I would take the time to set up another side just like this with this thing, almost like an A-frame style. But I think with this, since I've got all those leaves, I can put in this bag and I, and I can shimmy myself up against that wall and I'll be okay tonight. If not, I have a tiny blanket over there that I can use as a backup. Now, inside this, let's look in here. This is a Molly canteen. Most of my canteens are Alice. But this thing is cool because it's got pouches on each side. And see, this is what I was talking about. These kits are supplemental. What this is, this is a little medical kit. And it's got like uh, ibuprofen, antacid, uh, all, all different sinus medication. It's got, uh, uh, let me show you this right here without pulling everything out. It's got little antiseptic whites. It's got uh, hydrocortisone if you get cut. It's got some band-aids in the bottom. It's also got biofreeze, pain relieving gel. So, you know, that's about as minimalist of a, you know, first aid kit that you can can have. But it is, a, it is it's somewhat of a first aid kit. So let's put that back in there. I really should have painted this red and I think that's what I'm gonna do in the future. And then this over here is, two candles and a lighter because instead of using your lighter all the time you can light a candle to save your lighter and you can use this to dry out your tender and then uh, this being a winter kit I'm near the creek I have clean drinking water and I'm gonna drink a little bit tonight before bed to make sure I'm hydrated and then I have a cup and this is uh what was the name of this the canteen shop this is a little stove, and I'll probably use it in the morning. I'm always in a bad mood in the morning, so I probably won't be saying much. I'll probably just start a little fire. And these things, you have to keep feeding them, so it's best to take a digging stick and dig a little hole to make it where you can put more fire under it. And then we're going to heat up some water. Now, this is going to lead me to a little bit more of the survival philosophy here that I want to talk about. Now, see, to me, this does a whole lot more... That, that little kit there does, that, that little kit here is three pounds, and to me it does a whole lot more than the two-quart because the two-quart, now if you think about it a minute, the two-quart, you have two quarts of water to drink, period, that's it. When it's done, it's done. You're either going to have to put some tablets in it and find a creek, but with this, you have a way of heating water, you have a cup. Once your one quart runs out, if you're near a creek, you can scoop up some water and boil it, and on the other side, you've got a pouch with a first aid kit. And the other side, you've got a pouch with a fire kit. Now, let's take a peek in here. I have a mora, and I tried to build a shelter without it. Because it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. But this just proved myself that in this situation, I didn't have to have it. So let's look at that. Look at that. The zipper pull just pulled off. Piece of junk. I might have to throw that in there. Now here's some cordage that I didn't even need. 50 feet of 8 inch poly cordage. I didn't need the other blanket. So I actually could have gone smaller with this. Now this is a little headlamp. Now I want to show you something about this headlamp. When you're out in the middle of nowhere like this and you're not necessarily uh, <clears throat> what I call camping, you want something like this that you can cut on to find your way around. And what I do with this is I scoot it down and I wear it like a necklace. That way I've always got access to it. All right, now let's look down here for a minute. 
because we're going to be dark in a minute. Inside this little bag here, I have some little lights with some Velcro. There's one red light and one white light. Okay. You can use it for signaling. Okay. It comes with a little Velcro strap. And it's got a clip. Here's a red light. Now I'm going to show you something here. I'm going to pull these out of the bag. And what I'm going to do, if by some weird chance, now I'm going to put the clear one back in. Now check this out. If by some chance I happen to need to leave the shelter to relieve myself at night, this little light here, you mash the button, and it's either red or it's blinking, or it's a slow blink. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this overhead where I've always got access to it. I'm going to hang it right there. And so if I leave... I'll situate it like, like that. Well, let's see. How do I situate it? I'm pretty sure I'll be able to see this at night. I just don't like the way that's sitting because it's like it's... Well, maybe I'll move it. Look, I'm just wasting time here. Let's move it up to here. <laughs> okay, let's move it up to here. And what I'll do... See that? I'm going to have that on access at the top of my shelter. And I think I'm going to leave that just hanging down there. See, that way I can find my way back in the dark. Now, I'm going to try not to walk too far. All right, now here's the other thing. I'm going to take my other light. And my other little strap. And it's got a clip on it. And I could clip it to my wrist while I sleep. But what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going I'm to slide it right here so that I can just reach up, and there it is. Make sure it works. Yeah, see? If I have to, I can clip it up under here because it's got Velcro on it. Now, let's go back down here and check the rest of this. All right, we have... Here's a compass. Now, the compass I can use to find my way out and then I have a mirror. I could use that for signaling. This is chicken bullion cubes. More about that in a minute. Okay, nuts. If I get hungry, I can eat the nuts. I'm not hungry, so I'm not going to eat them. I'm going to save them for if I want them tomorrow. I really should have more than one pack. This is a hydration multiplier. It's electrolytes. Keeps you from being dehydrated. This is a little pack of coffee, but I'm not going to drink it because if I drink it, it's a diuretic and it's going to make me get up and pee tonight. And once I crawl into this bag, I'm done. If I'm comfortable, I'm falling asleep. But those are there if I need them. And then down inside this other little back pouch, on a piece of orange paracord, I have a Dones magnesium bar. And then this is a super high decibel whistle. Uh, I had some people complaining, saying you shouldn't use a normal whistle, so I bought a high decibel one. I think this is like 110 or 120, and it's got a piece of tinder inside it for in case I need it for fire starters. I don't even know if I want it. I think I'm going to go off into the distance there and, and blow it and maybe see if it echoes. <laughs> Let's do that now. That hurt my ears. <laughs> that is so loud. I think I bought that at REI. I forget the name of it. It's got an E on it, a little flame. That thing's incredible. <laughs> Unbelievable. All this stuff back in here because I don't want it scattered around all over the place. I don't want to lose any of it. Now, here's the thing. <clears throat> like I said, I have a Mora. Didn't even need it. May need it in the morning for fire lighting. I got cordage, didn't even need it. Okay. Now, better to have it, not need it, than to need it, not have it. Uh, I'm putting all this stuff up. Now, here's the thing on this. Okay, 
there are some very well-known survival experts and there's a lot of stuff that I agree with them uh, but one of the things that some of them have said is like you know if you're if you're out running around and you don't have any food and you're in a survival situation drink a bunch of water well here's the thing and you people in the medical profession will know uh, if you drink a bunch of water if you drink too much water you're gonna wash away all of your electrolytes and your salts and well I think they call it P levels it's for your potassium levels and sodium levels and it's what regulates your heartbeat and that's why like there's a woman that she was in a contest one time for a radio station for who could drink the most water would win uh, tickets to a concert well she drank a whole case of water and she died and what it is is all that water flushed away all of her electrolytes dropped her potassium levels her salt levels her electrolytes were non-existent and and her heart went into a cardiac arrest and she died so here's the thing okay these are chicken bouillon cubes all right you could also use beef bouillon cubes but i like the chicken better but you could carry a little kit like this right here and i think there's about 12 or 13 of these in there and you'll have like two cubes at a time and what you do is you heat up the water you put this in there it's a hot drink and this stuff is like it's like a healthy energy drink <laughs> this stuff if you ever get a chance the chicken bouillon cubes and the beef bouillon cubes read the ingredients all the salts and the things that they put in these little cubes is incredible and now i don't need any energy i don't feel dehydrated but what i'm going to do is i'm going to drink a little bit of water okay i'm going to drink a little bit of water and then i'm going to go to bed because simple fact of also before it gets dark i want to get snuggled in and make sure that I feel comfortable enough. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay my jacket on top. That way if I get cold at night, if I get cold, I'll wake up. It ain't like I'll wake up shivering. But if I get cold, I'll just wake up and I'll put the jacket on. But I don't really want to wear the jacket in that, in that bag. I'm going to drink just enough to wet my whistle. Now, this is wintertime survival. This ain't summer su survival. You can dehydrate any time, but I haven't sweated much. I don't sweat much. So, put that there. And one other thing I think I'm going to do before it gets dark, because when I wake up, I'm going to be in a bad mood. And I will really want coffee, but I shouldn't drink coffee because it's a diuretic. It'll flush away all my, you know, it'll, it'll make it where I have to pee. So that's like a comfort food. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a digging stick and I'm going to dig a little hole. And then I'm going to get up a little bit of wood so that I'll be ready for this in the morning. All right, so let's do that before it gets dark. Because it is starting to get dark. As a matter of fact, I think i got to put my hat back on. And that's another thing, too, this is right here, is whenever you're out here, always have either a light in your hat or on your head. Get some of these leaves away. Now, see, these leaves are all wet underneath this ground is soggy all right so let's take the more <clears throat> let's make a digging stick dig a little hole here. Cut these roots out of the way. I don't really like how this is going. It's, it's got kind of a deep thing right there. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of wood, a rotten piece of wood. I'm going to cut a flat on it. Just like that. I'm going to set it right there. Then here's another piece. Of, oh, that's my digging stick. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. All right, though. There's my home for the evening. Now, I don't know if you can see this or not. I don't know if it's showing up dark or light on video. A lot of times I'll have to lighten things up. But if you look at the horizon... Right across the top is blue, and then up above it is like a pink color.
Just me and the sounds of nature. I think you might could see the pink a little bit better right there. It's definitely starting to get dark now. I'm not using my mower right now. What I'm doing is just taking a branch, a tree limb that was freestanding, and I'm just breaking it into pieces. I'm just making a pile of wood. And I'm just piling up right over here by the tree. If I thought it was going to rain at night, or if I knew there was rain predicted, I might do it a little bit uh, differently. I might put the wood under my shelter. Kind of having an afterthought. I got two rocks instead of those sticks. I don't even know what I was thinking. And I'm going to put the sticks, the rocks down and use it. I think this will be better tomorrow. Yeah, that'll work. Pretty flat. And I got a bunch of wood over here. I got a little pile of wood right there. Well, I think it's time to turn in because I hear the crickets. Let's ease you up and let you. Have a little look at the forest. All right, let's crawl into the shelter. All right, see that little hole in the back back there? I think that's where I'm going to put my boots. So, let's see. Let's see if I can do this without blinding the camera. Here's a dry spot. Let's sit down. I'm gonna take my boots off. Cause I'm not sleeping with my boots on. Now the reason I'm not sleeping with my boots on, if it was winter time, I'd hang them up somewhere. Let my feet dry a little bit. I'm not sleeping with my boots on cause I think it'll be hard to get them into that bag. And I really think since I've wore these boots all day and sweated in them, I really think that it's going to be bad. Cold. Alright. Now I want to see. I want to try something here. Hold on. Oh, wait a minute. I got a headlamp here. Cut that off for a minute. Now what I want to do. This is that little Velcro piece. I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to put it right here. Oh, now you're talking. Hey, look, you can see me. But look, I'm still going to leave that to where, and I'm going to put my other flashlight in my boot. I'm going to put my feet in. Oh, wait a minute. Let's see if I can reach my jacket. 
Because once I crawl into this stupid thing, look at me. <laughs> okay, one more thing I'm going to show you right here. Let's cut this on too. Try not to waste too much of my battery. All right. This jacket's got a hood that I can pull over my hoodie. And then this pocket in the back here. I'm going to wear my gloves. This pocket in the back here. You just rip it open and there's a blanket inside it. That's just for my personal protection. This is ABO. ABO. I think it's Australian Beach Outfitters. It's like a beach blanket. I think it's called a groundhog. But I'm going to leave that in there to where I can find it. And if I get cold, I'll just lay the jacket on top of me. But I'm going to lay in here for a minute and see how I feel. So let's pile this up against the tree. Just like that. You can see that. All right, let's crawl into this bag. Like I said, once I crawl into it, I'm going to crawl out again. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, now, that is a lot of work. Those leaves are a lot of work. But they are so thick. Now that branch right there needs to be turned up, if possible. Perfect. Let me get this camera over here. Let's see. Now my feet. These, these branches, these branches here are a lot longer than those. And that was a mistake on my part. I should have made them all the same length. My feet wouldn't be hanging out. Now the bag, okay, now I'm going to try something. i got to pull this all the way up. This bag is plenty big enough. Oh man, this jacket feels great behind me. Now a lot of people complain about Mylar, but I don't because, you know, I don't sweat much. I want to show you something here real quick. Let's turn the camera around. I turn the viewfinder around. I really got to go to sleep here in a minute because check it out. Oh, it's all blurry. That looks a little bit light, but I'm telling you, that's the forest. That's what I see. <clears throat> now I'm going to take this off. I'm going to take this off and give you a, a, a point of view. Some very sloppy filming. Alright, now you see this right here? You're in line with my nose. <laughs> okay. So I'm turning the camera around. Let's rip this around. Man, this is hard to film. This is a, you don't want a big shelter, but... I'm looking straight up from my nose. Okay, now I'm moving over to my, where my shoulder is. Okay, now that right there, my shoulder is completely under here. Let's turn this around. I 
I'm actually all up under here because my feet are so narrow though they're on the other side of that little bitty tree right there <clears throat> now if my feet are gonna get cold or not I don't know <laughs> all right I got to get you on the let me look <laughs> that's a funny look <laughs> what I was doing is I was squinting Trying to see how much battery I got left. Now, what I'm gonna have to do? I'm gonna have to cut this. I'm gonna take a little final shot here, and then I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'll cut you on in about ten minutes to tell you how warm I feel, and then I'm gonna cut you off for the night unless I start shivering, because I gotta have batteries for in the morning. Because I'm gonna finish this up in the morning. Let's see. Put it in my boot right there. This leaf bed is so comfortable. I'll see y'all in the morning. Nothing on me got cold last night but my feet. Now, this is the boss. I kind of mashed it down in the middle here, but it's all right. It gave it a curve. This is the boss. My backside never got cold. Never. Not even for a minute. My feet got cold. Now, what's on top of me here was just a thin blanket. And I woke up last night, I had to crawl out and pee. And that's when I realized that this top layer really wasn't enough for me. So I put on the jacket and my hood. I still got my hat on. And I pretty much slept like this. I had my arms in with my gloves on and I had this blanket up like this. Well bag. I had a little bit of room. I don't know. I'm gonna have to adjust this thing. I had a little bit of room. Let's see how this thing's standing up on its own. This is it pulled down, touching my face. I had a little bit of room and it was almost like it was reflecting. I don't know, reflecting back. I'd say it was pretty, pretty comfortable for, uh, for this to be for this to be considered survival. From a minimalist kit. I was about as comfortable as I am during camping. I haven't got much, much to say right now. Let me get woke up. I didn't sweat in the bag none, that's a good thing. Some people sweat a lot, I don't. Am I well rested? That's not bad. Oh, I never opened this thing up. I put my jacket on, but I never used that. I just used it as a pillow. Look, you can see how mashed down this is. I think it was a success, especially since I only used about half of the kit. 
But I'll say this, years ago when I used to do this, I'm gonna have to get some water. Years ago when I used to experiment with this kind of stuff, I just used those emergency survival blankets. And uh, I'd bring tape. And I would actually lay one on the ground and fill it full of leaves. And then set the other blanket on top. And then tape around the edges and I would actually make a quilt. Which is pretty cool. I don't know if I can see my breath. I can barely see it, so it may not quite be down to freezing. I don't know. But the beauty of it, it was a perfect temperature that I could wear the jacket and I was comfortable and I never sweated. I'm tempted to just go home, but I'm going to go ahead and try to start a fire and uh, make a bullion cube, two bullion cubes. And I'm going to see how much of a burst of energy it gives me since I uh, hadn't ate since yesterday. Alright, let's get out this little kit here. Got two candles and a lighter. Now the beauty of this thing is, is in a situation like this, you don't really want to mess around with uh, having to, any kind of, you know, primitive type fire if possible. You want to just get things done. So a candle, even if I don't fetch a candle out of there, it served its purpose and I can replace it later. So I'm going to set this right here. And since I got a little hole down here, Since I got a little hole here, I can try to lay sticks across it. Just like this. Even if I have to sacrifice the candle, I'm good. See that it's already starting to work. I've got a buzzing in my ears. See how that's already taken off. This is why I gathered all this stuff up last night. Everything's pretty wet. Sun's coming up. You know something, I don't even care about this candle. I don't think. I don't know, I guess if I can fetch it out, I will. Nah, I think I'll just wind up destroying the fire if I fetch it out. Sun's coming up. There's my Brea. Yeah, it's below freezing. Oh, look. You know something? I don't even want to deal with the. Uh, Right now, I don't even want to deal with having to boil water for my first cup. I'm just going to go ahead and put some of this water in there and warm it up. About a half a cup. Yeah. 
I'm just going to sacrifice that candle. See, now I got a good fire going in here. I can just feed pieces of wood in there. The thing I didn't think about was having to handle this. <clears throat> Maybe leather gloves would be better than these insulated cloth gloves. I had to turn the handle around because all the flames is coming out right here. Like I said, if I'd have got this water out of the creek over there, I'd have to make sure it was boiling. But I just have to make sure it's hot now. Maybe by the time that wood burns away, it'll be hot. As far as this minimalist survival kit goes, I don't think there's much I'll change. Now, if I knew this was like a real survival type situation, I would have got that candle out. I don't even see the candle. Of course, we'll see it then. And I think that's enough. I think that's enough flames right there. I gotta find. My bullion cubes. I'm gonna put two in there. Ooh, it's already warming up. Three, six, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. It's fourteen in there. Depending on how you regulate them. You know something? I'm just gonna have. I'm just gonna try one for now. If I can smash it up. I got to working it around and I smushed it up real good. There you can see the contents coming out of it. Look, I can just about hear it. I feel the warmth from that fire. It's pretty nice. back of this. I wash these gloves when I get home. Oh, I think it's plenty hot enough. Now about this little survival kit. Is there much I'd change about it? I don't know, maybe, I'll have to think about it. But if you think about it, I only used half of the kit, really. But you also gotta think about on that show alone, you know, there's people that went for days and days and days without food. And uh, you know, really you could, unless you're diabetic. If you're diabetic, you need to make other arrangements make sure it doesn't happen uh, for me this is perfectly fine so let's try this these little canteen cups work great especially with these little things I mean it didn't take it didn't take nothing to to heat this up. That is so good.
when you've spent a night when you've spent a, a night like this in a in an impro, impro, improvised situation this is good this feels so good it tastes good it feels good going down I don't know how long this video is but you know I wanted to you know I wanted to document everything because usually whenever I'm doing my bushcraft and camping type thing I got a whole backpack full of luxuries but with this you gotta remember this is pretty much what I had <clears throat> and I turned it into a pretty nice little overnight I'm going to finish this up because this video is starting to get long. Get out and try this sometime if you actually have a survival kit. I'm not telling you to go out and kill yourselves, but I'm telling you if you have a survival kit, go out and try it. That is so good. <clears throat> and since it's not coffee, it's not a diuretic means it won't make you pee out all of your fluids and you'll stay hydrated. There's all kinds of salts and good stuff in there. Next time you're at the grocery store, read the ingredients on there and you'll be surprised at what I was in those little cubes. I'm going to go dip this in the creek and cool it off and then I'm going to grab another cup of water to uh, douse out the fire. house is so handy back there. I'm also very happy that I didn't need that thing. I didn't need that blanket. I managed to get by without it. So I got my complete kit put back in. I'm going to take that bag and I'm going to try to crumble it up. Ooh, it got cold in my jacket off. I'm going to wad this back up. When I go home, I'm going to try to see if I can cram it back into the little pile. I see if I can put it in my cargo pocket here on my pants. I don't know if I can put it back into the factory thing or not the way they had it rolled up. That'll be enough to transport it home.
and that's it I'm ready to go if a person was so inclined they could just lay, lay right on that pile of leaves in a bivy sack hope you enjoyed it hope you had fun we shall see you in the next one